fantastic talk and thank you so much for that. I should introduce myself as well. So, um, so I'm Andy. I'm with the Kinfolk team that's now in Microsoft and, uh, you know, one of the people being involved a little bit in organizing um, this event. Um, and yeah, and I've been involved in Kubernetes for a while. I kind of followed the whole pod security policy uh, debate, you could call it, I guess, day backle, um, you know, arguments. And I never really kind of looked into it in a whole lot of detail, just kind of generally heard, oh, pod security policy, bad, you know, not, <laughs> and I didn't really know, well, exactly why or hadn't really kind of taken the time to look into it in depth. So I really enjoyed the talk and, um, you know, because you really explain well kind of what the problems were and, um, you know, and why we had to, to go to, you know, to an alternative. Um, I, I guess, you know, my my first first thought was when looking at uh, OPA as an alternative, um, like the, the, the whole Rego policy language looks, um, you know, is is something pretty complex to for users to learn. And I was wondering, you know, what do you think are the uh, the kind of people that are going to be writing these policies? You know, is it security s staff? Is it cluster operators? Is it developers? Um, yeah, kind of which personas do you have in mind when you think about? Yeah, so... I, I can I can agree uh, with you. Uh, I mean, Rigo is could be. I mean, if you are used to um, common language uh, programming language, is is totally different, right? Is more with the I don't know if you remember Prolog. It was something pretty old yeah. uh, that no no one is is talking about right now. But it was kind of super powerful language, and and uh, uh, Rigo is super powerful as well, and. Is and the, uh, its performance are, are just great. Uh, so it could be difficult to start with or start to coding with that or start creating policy or something like that. Uh, but in the same time, uh, it's really useful and it's super powerful. And the idea that we have in mind when when I started to uh, announce the tool that, that I that, that I've done basically. Uh, was just was for, for also for these reasons, right? So creating automatically some policy for uh, I mean in this case it's just related to post security policy to replace post security policies, but that was basically what I demand. If you can provide something uh, automated, uh, I think it could be a good start for anyone that that, have, that are not familiar with the uh, with Rico or with OPA, for example. Right. Yeah. I. I... Um, so, so basically, so kind of this kind of um, makes that learning curve a lot, a lot shallower for people, right? Is what you're saying? At the um, Cube Policy Advisor, and have have you seen uh, Kiverno as well? Yeah, yeah. So we have we have that in my. Uh, it, the next step would be uh, enhance the tool even more, adding even more policy. And this one is one of the. I think is the next one that are probably we. We need to. I I thought we because uh, my former manager started basically the project, and it was the Cube PSP uh, advisor, and uh, thanks to him, I started to to have a look at that, and we so we we decided how to move, and then uh, I I just started to announce the project, but the um, the idea is to also to announce even more, uh, adding even more uh, policy types. So, oh, that, that that's yeah. great. Yeah, no, this would be. It'd be great if you could like do use the same tool to generate OPA policies, Giverno policies. I, I guess yeah. PSPs while they're still while they're still around. Um, yeah, yeah, I, the, yeah. The point is also migrate from from PSP, right? So a lot of people or a lot of um, company has already PSP uh, deployed. So moving from PSP to OPA or to somewhere else could be painful, and and that's why we we address this this need, right? So the move from yeah. from a technology to to another that in this case is OPA, but could be something else in the future. Yeah. So I was um, I was wondering about Gatekeeper and where you see where you see that fits in because that seems to be kind of the the idea behind Gatekeeper is also to make that migration easier. Yeah. I mean, you can use a Gatekeeper or a Kubernetes Admission Controller that you prefer. So that's that's okay. That's fine. 
Uh, it could work with uh, with both of them since I mean uh, Opa is still Opa and Rigo um, is is the same. So no big deal with that. So of course you you uh, you can use both. It depends on what you need to do, and yeah, basically that. So it's supporting the 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 fun of for of Opa is that is supporting all the Kubernetes uh, resources. So you can create basically policy for whatever you you need and you you may need for in the future. Right. So that... would, would it make sense to have Gatekeeper as kind of one of the outputs of a policy advisor as well to say we'll create Gatekeeper policies? Mm, I mean, I think it's supporting uh, Rigo and Opa mm -hmm. as well. So that's why I'm saying we are already covering right. it since it's, it's basically Opa. So yeah. that's uh, that's that's fun. So <laughs> that that's the cool stuff. But of course, we could we the idea is covering also other other policies or other technology that will come in in the future. And uh, the one you mentioned is is one is 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 already um, pretty famous and pretty used. So that's basically the next step. You you already uh, discovered the next step. So <laughs> <laughs> see what else I can find out that you can worry about. <laughs> oh, nothing more. I mean, there's nothing more to find out, obviously. <laughs> well, so one of the things that um, that I was thinking about was, uh, you know, the it looks like basically what you do right now is it's like a static analysis, basically. So you know, you look at the pod spec or you know the, either the YAML or the the spec of a pod that's running. Um, you know, have you have you looked at kind of expanding it beyond that to Dyna more of a dynamic analysis of runtime behavior, um, you know. So, for example, being able to identify which capabilities are required and, and being able to put that into uh, like a setcom profile into into a security profile. Uh, I mean, uh, OPA is already support. I mean, I don't know if I uh, correctly understand the question, but um, I mean, you can uh, you can catch the create the, the create. And you can even catch them um, the update. So if you are modifying something, you are uh, you can catch with with Opa since is Opa is basically working with the Kubernetes API server. So if and you can enable uh, whatever you wanna you wanna catch with Opa. So in this case, in the demo that I that I did, we are we were catching the create and also the update. So we are kind of. Uh, if it's something new, we we are going to the the action is will be the the create. If you're the, if you're going to modify something already in, you are you are doing an update. So it's kind of the uh, we are covering both. If you are talking about security uh, in in runtime, that's uh, I think that's a, a different topic. That I mean, as as Sysdig, uh, we have Pico that is covering. There is an open source tool uh, that is. Um, is a CNCF project as well, and is basically covering security um, uh, around time. So is something happening uh, in runtime, or you see, I don't know, like uh, a terminal shell open in the container, Pico is going to uh, arise an alert for that, and 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 of course you can do all, all the yeah. other investigations. So yeah, it yeah. is it, it, actually is a bit different, but is is still a security in, in Kubernetes and port. I yeah. mean, and basically, FICO is my main um, my main topic uh, usually. So I, I I I did I did the Black Hat talk with the FICO and FICO Sidekick uh, for create a Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes response engine a couple of months ago. So that's that's fun. It's still security, but on the other perspective. Basically. So um, I noticed that you'd in the past been uh, a red team member. So, yes. so you've been on the, uh, the 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 side of the hackers uh, trying to break in. What what's your number one piece of advice for uh, for folks trying to secure their Kubernetes clusters? Uh, so that's yeah, it's kind of. Uh, that's a tricky question, honestly. <laughs> uh, that's tricky because I mean, in uh, in uh, red team, it's not just technology, right? It's it's more about it's also about people and it's also about um, human 
being in human response, right? So sometimes when you need to to walk into something, uh, there is not like a technological way to do that, right? So you might uh, go for for human uh, interaction, or, or like fishing, or just calling to get some some information that might that you may need to to access it. So that's kind of uh, the big deal sometimes. Um, but yeah, in Kubernetes, in Kubernetes is is is, a, is different. Even though you can um, you can actually. Um, I mean, you can actually do that as well. For example, in Docker, there are like uh, images in Docker that that they are trying to uh, looks like legitimate um, images, but then they are just uh, with backdoor or something like that. Yeah. So the, the, I think the human uh, interaction and the human being is still uh, the the weak um, the weak ring in the chain. Okay. So, well. Uh, that was that's that's great advice. I mean, I, I guess security is security, with, whether it's Kubernetes or any other kind of system. Um, and thank you for sharing with us today, uh, Cube Policy Advisor. Um, folks watching, to check that out and uh, you know enjoy the rest of Rejects. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.